Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week we're going to design discuss rules, or maybe a little bit of how to lay out a rulebook for your design when it's at that point. This format is going to be a little bit different in that I pre-recorded this video for the uh, Kudo Plays competition that I was talking about a couple weeks back. So enjoy and please let us know if you like this new format and if you'd like to see more videos in it. Hi everyone, I'm Ben and I've been a Kudo Plays competitor since season two. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about rules layout and hopefully how we can compose these files for turn in in February. We're going to go over the introduction body conclusion that includes things like the thematic overview, the object of the game, component lists and setup, as well as the flow of the game and how turns break down, and finally, how the end game is triggered and what final scoring is like. We'll also include, potentially, a game terms and round summary section at the very back of the rulebook. The thematic overview is what gets your players into the setting of your game. Things to touch on might include who, where, and when they are, how they got into the situation, and what are they trying to accomplish. The thematic overview is a little bit different than a gameplay overview in that you do not want to mention any game mechanics by name. This is the storytelling aspect, the general impression you want to give first thing about what the game is about. I like to keep this only a couple sentences long, but if your game really thrives on the lore or mythology or story of the game, then feel free to make this a whole page of your rulebook if you like. I've noticed a lot of gamers who want to get into the game will usually gloss over or skip this section, but it doesn't hurt to have. And for the players who do appreciate a good theme, they'll definitely be happy and appreciative that you've put so much time to setting up the world of your game. Next we come to the object of the game, and this is how players win. So this will include the game mechanics as opposed to the previous section, and it'll detail a little bit about what they're doing over the course of the game, like what they will be doing on their turns, and what the goal they're trying to reach is. Players have really liked, for me, when explaining my game to them for the first time, to tell them exactly what they're trying to do. And I think the object of the game section is a great place for you to do the same thing whether it's reach a certain number of points or end up as the last player standing, some simple sentence or two should be enough to give them the idea. The components list is a nice visual of everything that's included in the game. Normally you want to include the term specific name for each piece as well as the quantity. This will help the players recognize what is what as well as when you name them in the rulebook later, what pieces you're referring to. Setup is usually a step-by-step -step process that tells players how to put the game together onto the table ready for play. You'll want to make sure that you don't forget any of your setup steps. I like to start from the beginning with the board and then narrow down to what it is the players will need specifically. Generally speaking, I've seen a lot of successful games include the component list and the setup sections next to each other, even on facing pages so that again, you can go back and forth quickly and easily about what the game should look like when it's ready to play. And there are no questions asked about what piece goes to what step of the setup. The flow of the game is going to be the general expectation of how the game will work. Does it work in rounds? Or are the turns simultaneous? Who takes the first turn and how long will players go until they reach the end of the game? This is again a very general look at what the game is like before any specifics. It'll be a usually small section in the rulebook. I like to think the flow of the game as another kind of overview section, a little bit more general than what it is you're about to get into with the heavier details, so as not to overload your players and readers initially. Turn breakdown is where you get into the nitty gritty details. This should include what one player's turn is like, and then if there are any general rules that need to be covered, like a phase or something that affects all players. I like in my rule books to have as many diagrams as possible to give players a look, a snapshot, of what it is you're trying to explain to them to help them understand a little bit faster. 
Typing up an example of a turn or a round can also be really good, and I'm particularly proud of this one here. Depending on your game, I would say the turn breakdown section is a great place for you to explain phases or action points or however else it is that players will be doing the things that they do in your design. It may also be worth mentioning here if one player's decision can affect another or if there is some kind of interrupt mechanic in your game for another player on their off turn when it is not their turn to interact with another. Once you've gotten through the main turn stuff, you'll want to tell the players how they will end the game. In sum, it'll be when a certain point is reached, whether it be a point value or a certain number of rounds. Uh, sometimes games will also have one additional round after the end of the game has been triggered to allow players to clean up a little bit and hopefully maximize their score and experience. And lastly, if your game does have final scoring, you'll want to explain how players will tabulate and determine the final winner. You might have a spin in which the player with the second highest score ends up winning or something similar. So really, all of these sections should be custom tailored to your game. These last two pages, if you recall from the overview, are really great to have on your back cover so that you can have the rulebook laid out at the side of the table and there for easy reference. Game terms is one of those things where maybe players have special abilities or there are special card effects that might be a little bit difficult for first time players to remember. So having a game term section or a glossary is really nice to have as a player aid if you don't already have one in your game. In bigger, heavier games, round summaries can also be super useful for the back of your rulebooks. Generally, this will go over start of the turn, any phases that are included, and then maybe the end of someone's turn as well before it passes on to the next player. And here are some tips for rulebook layout in general. My biggest one is for you to stay consistent with your game terms if you capitalize them in any way, uh, your verb tense if you decide to use present or past tense, and so on. The less inconsistencies you have in your game, the easier it is for players to remember the rules. You can also help players remember things by using weights, italics, changing the size in your rulebook, and also surrounding frames of text with a box. These all kind of fall under the umbrella of hierarchy, and these will help give priority to certain parts of your rulebook. I prefer not to use hyphenation and keep text from going across an entire page width because that will exhaust the eye and make it more likely for players to lose their spots while reading. Of course, you should be efficient. If you can summarize two paragraphs worth in one sentence by trimming down or streamlining your rule, do so. For a lot of players, reading the rules is the least fun part. And so if you can cut down on the amount of time players have to spend reading and more time playing, you'll be in a good spot. Finally, I've had some really great experiences asking for help from players who have played the game both zero times and multiple times. The zero times is kind of referred to as blind playtesting, whereas multiple times can help in rephrasing a rule that you think makes sense to you, but doesn't to your players. Oh, and before I forget, it's also really useful to put the essential game information, number of players, playtime, and suggested age for your game on the cover or inside cover, as well as any credits you might like to include. And there we are. I hope this little video has been insightful and helpful for when you are ready to start building out your rulebook to have people play your game without you explaining it to them. I'm sure the Kudo Plays committee present will be more than happy to answer any questions. But until next time, I've been Ben. Make the game you want to play. Thank you so much for watching, and I forgot to mention in the pre-recording that the best way to learn is obviously to play more games, read those games' rule books, and take away your favorite parts from those and put them into yours. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery here at Board Game Blueprint. If you got something out of it, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for our upcoming content. As always, I'm Ben. This has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint, and together, let's build something great.